Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, the Transformation Station, and also the Radio for the Soul, RPM. Let me throw this at you as my listening audience. Brand new program I am putting out to the public. It's powerful. Dear Lord, it's powerful. Are you a spiritual seeker who's ready to move forward in your life? If you're wanting to shift from struggling to feeling that life is effortless, send me an email at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com and title that email, Mr. Keith Blanchard, I want my free 30-minute session. I'll be glad to get you on your way to expansion, explosive clarity, all those powerful faculties that we need to create the very life that we want. I'll show you how you can move through different paradigms of your life, recognize, plug in, and manifest your life with effortless ease. Again, send me an email at Keith Blanchard at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. If you have been listening to Center of Light Radio for quite a while, you know that um, I always offer free stuff. Go to centerflightradio.com, fill out that sign-up form. I will be sending you all of my work. Eventually, you have all of it. Things that cost money in the past are now becoming free. Why? Because my money does not come from me, uh, from, from the outside world. My money comes from my connection to source. So I, I just feel like it's time for me to do that. So go to centerflightradio.com, fill out that that newsletter, um, sign up form on the front page, and I'll make sure that all that stuff begins to domino effect into your experience. This Wednesday coming, this divine man that I had contact with recently while I was out doing this peace walk around a labyrinth, uh, this holy man, this God-realized man from India, I started taking some personal video for myself, and when I was looking through the backside of my phone, taking these wide-angle shots, I'm thinking, Keith, don't stop filming. Film this thing. <laughs> so I video recorded the whole thing on my phone, and I turned it into a documentary movie, and it's called Peace, Love, and Unity, a modest documentary. That's going to be coming out Wednesday. If you want information about that, you can send me an email again at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com and say, Keith, I would love to view this movie. There is no copyright on this movie. It's all free, and we ask that you just share it so we can make humanity uh, become the thing that it's supposed to be, which is unified, peaceful, and just a happy group of people, that's for sure. Um, I think we're going to get down to Center of Light Radio Business. I met this gentleman some time back <clears throat> when I was doing a spiritual fair here in Memphis, Tennessee. My guest tonight is Mr. Titus Joseph, and we will be discussing The Beginning is Near. Introducing a, a holistic new concept that reconciles science to spirituality explains how things come into being. Titus Josephs is an author of two books on metaphysics entitled Our Curious World of Mirror Images and I Am Mind, I Am Consciousness. These books introduce a new idea to us called Positional Symmetry Requisite Mirror Image, aka PSRMI, is conceived as the arc our the thing. fundamental principle that explains how existing things come into being as evidenced by the curious symmetries we see throughout nature and mirrored in the laws of science. Mr. Joseph has a bachelor's degree in philosophy with a minor in religious studies and a master's degree in counseling. You can find more about my guest tonight at www.titusjoseph.com. That's T-I-T-U-S joseph.com. Mr. Titus, welcome to Center of Light Radio, sir. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate uh, your invitation. I look forward to the program tonight. Uh, my name is Titus Joseph. I am, as Keith said, I'm an author of two books on metaphysics and spirituality that offer a profound and meaningful new paradigm on reality called Positional Symmetry Requisite Mirror Image. This new paradigm on reality assimilates our deepest scientific laws using them as the foundation, the skeleton, so to speak, to confirm itself as a candidate for the corrective lens we need to bridge dualism, separation, and the polarity we are all experiencing everywhere. Uh, the innovation of this fundamental idea blends science, and by virtue of the mirror image poles you choose, spirituality, into one beautiful new paradigm that anyone can see is true is a true reflection on reality i hope you stay tuned because as we finish this program 
if you grasp this, you will have a truly clear and beautiful understanding of how our, how our world is, how we're able as conscious beings to walk around planet Earth and, and imagine ideas of God and science. So I will discuss the problem of duality, duality as it applies in science and spirituality and demonstrate the importance of resolving the binding paradox by pointing to the negative consequences of the separation and the anxiety that comes with that, uh, that is implicit in dualism, that, that reality that really affects us in our ordinary lives. So I will then introduce listeners to a new concept that's positional symmetry requisite memory image that is proposed to bridge the divide and provide us a pair of corrective lens so that we may see and understand our reality more clearly. The beauty that comes out of this, however, is how the science and the spirituality become one. Again, uh, the, the books are called, my books are entitled um, uh, Our Curious World of Mirror Image Is, which is more science-based reading. It's heavy into philosophy and, um, and uh, goes back through history and looks at uh, developments over time. And I show how ancient philosophers before the time of Socrates, uh, their paradigms and how they, it all really, we're all looking at the same thing. So... We look well, I can it. tell you, Mr. Titus, something you just said just a minute ago, a lot of that is a little scientific. <laughs> yeah, well, much, but, much but, of it is science, but a lot of it is, um, it's, 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 it's philosophy, really. Sure, Very conceptual. sure. I see, the, I see the light behind me there. That's the sun. It's kind of magical. <laughs> a little bit. You know, something you the said a minute ago too. is, you know, all of our life, we, you know, we, we're looking at the world like this and we think this is seeing, right? Until something comes along and does this and you go, wow, this is what seeing really is. So if you would, give me an example of what you're talking about. And the first question I actually want to ask you is, how did you get into all this? Because it's very important for the listening audience, if any sort, be viewing our audio. Um, here's how my guests come onto the show. What brought you into this? Was this burning yearning? Or, I mean, how did you get into this way of question. being in life? Right. It's a good question. Uh, because uh, by, the, by now, the, my theories are well-developed, and uh, I'll be in... Just as an ad, I'll be headed to San Jose at the end of this week uh, to the Science of uh, science and Non-Duality. It's a conference on being, and I'll be presenting. I'm doing what's called a poster presentation for the leading thinkers on consciousness. But the question is, how did I get to this point? You know, it came to me quite suddenly um, uh, in life. I was, um, you know, uh, this is going back to Chicago. I'm out of college. I was in uh, Loyola University for 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 med school, for, for biology, I was a biology student. And uh, I had hard, you know, I had a very hard time dealing with social issues, the same social issues you see out there today. And, uh, you know, racism and all these issues. And, uh, you know, by the time I got out of college, it, it, the ideas literally just fell right into my head. And in a sense, I think that subconsciously I processed all the symmetry. You see a lot of mirror image symmetry in biology. In fact, it's called um, bilateral symmetry, where you put a line right down the middle, and that's like a characteristic of most organisms. And I think I had processed all that uh, to, um, uh, to, a, to this fundamental concept, which came, which came to me in the form of positional symmetry requisite mirror image. Um, and uh, that was like a huge eye-opening experience for me, because it showed how things come into being. And uh, that was really exciting, but what really took me off and made me like a really almost really caught up in this concept was uh, when I saw the poles, like the, the, the concept is based on mirror image poles, and we see mirror image poles throughout nature, you know, north and south poles, you know, electricity got positive and negative, the trees branch and root, you know, we see it throughout nature. But when I, once I understood the concept positional symmetry requisite mirror image, then I saw the words alpha and omega written somewhere and i immediately knew they were mirror you know i recognized the mirror image poles and my mind just assimilated it into the concepts that i had and i saw space and time the the what's going to come out of this is i'm going to we're going to show you how if you take the concept the beginning and the end and um and if you put take the beginning and the end together as one the intervening connection that holds the two together that's, I'm going to show you that literally that's what space and time is. It literally exists inside the meaning of that word. So that takes our discussion away from, you know, positive and negative, North Pole, South Pole, 
to when you, once you go to Alpha and Omega, then it becomes a spiritual thing. And now we see uh, suddenly ideas of God uh, come out of the paradigm. And so that was very exciting to me. And so that kept my interest and, and kept me going over the years. Uh, I, I love I love what you, the analogy you just drawn. We got that you have the alpha. Let's put mm-hmm. a dot. You have the omega. Let's put a dot. Right. So God is the end, beginning, and the end. Right. And you draw right. a line between those two dots. Right. What do you the, have? Right. <laughs> that line between the two right. dots is the existing thing. That's the story right. for example, story. humans. Humans are have a beginning and an end. It's called a birthday and a death day. Right. So the beginning, the the part in the middle is your life story. And that's the reality. And that's what we're going to see tonight, that the reality comes from the union of the mirror image poles. And I'm sure and I'll show how those mirror image poles are united, because one of the problems we have, one of the big, the the big problem, the number one problem we have in reality, uh, Kant, Immanuel Kant referred to it as the antinomy. Antinomy means mutual incompatibility. It's this idea of two separate things, right? Versus one, right? Dualism means there are two versus one. Now, if there's two, then you got to figure out how the two fit together and how does it work to make it one, one exists in reality. And you ask for an example, a good example of um, dualism or and the antinomy in philosophy is in science. In the world of science, science is, uh, you know, the most amazing knowledge we have, right? And we've discovered, you know, two, basically we're down to two basic laws now, uh, relativity, and quantum mechanics, right? These laws, according to the science, they're, they, they are true. They've been tested and tried over and over and they have worked. But the funny thing is you can't put them together to make one story that explains reality. For the scientists, you know, and, and we could go into how that works, but for the sci- how it works is that for the scientists, when they do the math and, and put quantum uh, mechanics and relativity equations together, the answer turns out to be, Every time, no matter where you start, it turns out to be infinite probabilities, okay? Which makes a lot of, we can make sense of infinite probabilities. That, okay, these, but to the scientists, they can't make sense of that. They, they need zero to 100. If it's like 99, they, go, they can go, oh, that's deuterium 99. We can deal with that. But anything over 100, they can't even comprehend. So, but it's infinite probabilities is what turns out to be the answer when you put quantum mechanics and, and, and relativity together. So, um, so in science, you have a dualism then. You have these two fields that you can't, you can't seem to put them together. So you have two instead of one, yet we know we have to be able to do that. Oh, so my concept I'm, I'm proposing bridges that divide and, and shows how two can be one. And the way that is, is because I'm arguing that fundamentally, if mirror image poles, if you use mirror image poles, their nature is that they come in pairs, right? Mirror image poles come in pairs, right? So you have two automatically. There's no such thing as a North Pole without the South Pole, right? Can you, can you, um, now in science, you know, scientists have been looking for what they call the monopole for over 50 years and I've not been able to find it, okay? So I'm proposing that there's, and there's, there are laws in science that, that, that stipulate that, that poles come in pairs. They're actually laws. So I'm arguing that the mirror image poles, uh, by using mirror image poles, we now have a system that has two in it, but yet we know that the two are one, okay? And so I'm gonna show how mirror image poles, uh, as we developed our discussion, I'd like to show how mirror image poles create different objects and how, how those objects can exist as one being inside uh, mirror image poles. And we see that easily like with the earth, you know. Joseph, I'm getting from the chat room. I don't know if this is applicable, but Carol says, hmm, what poles? Not hearing the word, marinage. Mirror image poles. Like, for example, no, no, no. let's oh, look at oh, she said, I see. I thought she was introducing a word from some sort of scientific formula. So if you would, would you give me an idea? You said you were going to discuss how things come into being. Let's talk a little bit about how things come into being because Center of Light Radio is all about helping people manifest their lives, not only personally, but on a collective scale. Exactly, exactly. And that's what all, all existence is about. It's about being and how, how, how it's empowered. So in a sense, this is a fundamental, I think, a fundamental discussion on that. Well, uh, 
the, what I, I've developed it in my book here, uh, Curious World of Mirror Images, this book right here, uh, which you can get at titusjoseph.com. And it's a full laid out argument that explains how mirror image poles create, uh, create things. Um, how, specifically, if we're going to get into it, uh, basically you have to get to the quantum level, which is the tiniest level that you can go in reality, okay? According to the science, uh, you have uh, relativity. Relativity control uh, uh, is a law that controls essentially how space and time works, okay? So you've got volume, you've got space, you've got, uh, you know, a huge, and it can be very expansive, uh, even going on to infinity. And relativity controls that, that the laws there, but you cannot, as it turns out, you can't go down deep, 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 like you can't, if you took uh, some, something, cut it in half, and then cut that in half, and then cut that in half, you, you would think you'd keep going forever, but as it turns out, at some point, you can't, it stops, it stops. And the scientists say, it's, it have a name for it, have a, it's called Planck's constant. At that point, it's like really tiny space, at that point, space essentially ends, and all you have is a is 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 quantum is is, is a it, it's a world of probabilities. It's basically. Let me ask you, this, Joseph. What you said it, it really tr triggered something in me. Mm -hmm. When you said it, it's you can do that to a point. Right. When we get to that point, is it a matter of? Physics that you can't any longer, or is it a matter of consciousness that you well, can't anymore? Well, that's a great question. Uh, it might, my reconciliation to that question is that it's both, you know, because you can't really so separate science from consciousness, right? Because all, we are observers, all scientists are observers, and so any So you're saying it's actually a physical, it's a, it's, a, it's a quantum law. I guess I should rephrase that question. Is it a matter of when you get to that point, you just physically, metaphysically can't do it anymore? Or is it because of one's conscious awareness that they don't have the faculties and the awareness to actually continue the splitting and breaking down? Hmm. Uh, well... I would refer then to the science on that because according to the science, uh, you can go only so far and then once you hit Planck's constant, the laws change. You can still go there because scientists go there. They do go in the quantum world, which is pretty freaking amazing, but, but the law changes. It's no longer relativity. It's now quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics is all probabilities. It's just, it's a fabric of, pro of probabilities, meaning the things that can be probabilities or possibilities. But for scientists, they use mathematical math equations, so it's probabilities. And, and at that level of probabilities, how it works is that all that's necessary for the probability to pop and manifest is consciousness. So in the presence of consciousness, any probability can manifest, and that's automatic. There's no need for cause for that. You don't have to push a button for that. It just happens automatically. So a probability can just pop in the presence of consciousness, and that's the science part. So say we were to peer down at the quantum level, okay? A probability would just pop, and once it pops, then because we're coming from space and time, we're scientists, we live on a huge scale relative to the quantum level, right? So there's a lot of space and time between us and the quantum scale. So all that space and time has to be filled in with information from the quantum level. And that when that space and time is filled in with information from the quantum level, we begin to see the object in space and time manifest and it then, it then takes on a kind of local locality. At the quantum level, there's no space and time. So there's no location. You can't say the quantum level is here or there. Uh, it's not, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, okay? But once uh, a probability hits the, um, the space and time field, the field, then it becomes localized, okay? It, it, it's here in the field. And once it becomes localized in consciousness, it can take on being, it can take on substance, and how it takes on substance, we talk about all that in the book, and we can get into that in a discussion if you want to. But it becomes a kind of, it, it begins to, to materialize as, as a being, 
and we begin to see it, okay? So that's why when at that level we see two things, we see a wave or a particle, okay? Remember at, at that level, you, it's, is it a wave or is it a particle? It's both. At the quantum level, it, it's, it's, it's like a wave of probabilities there. But when it hits space and time, it's localized. It's specific to this region, and now it becomes a particle. And that's why, and so it's really, uh, existing things are wavicles. They're wave and <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> and we have, we have, we are the influence over, or the determining factor of whether we can continue to experience this subatomic particle as a wave or a particle. Right. Consciousness is primary. Right, right. It is the main thing. Uh, but what's, and what's profound about that level of con is that it, it seems to behave like it's conscious down there. According to the science, um, you know, particles seem to be aware of the whole um, uh, scientific setup and behave as though they're conscious. I can provide quotes from many, many different scientists that show they behave as though they're conscious of the whole situation. So consciousness is primary. As it turns out, we're going <laughs> to, consciousness appears to be the major building, the major primary agent of all things. It creates things. It, it creates things in space and time for us to experience. And I'm arguing ultimately in my work that consciousness itself is God. And this is the meaning of God's name, I am. I am implies awareness. It implies presence and awareness. And I'm arguing that this is the name that consciousness which created all of us and created the planet bodies. That's the name it gave itself. <laughs> Got a message from the chat room. Someone asked a question. Do you ever get challenged by members of the scientific communities? Of course. <laughs> right. Of course. Isn't that the of fun course. of it, though? <laughs> all the time. And they beat you up a lot. Of, sometimes it, it's, it's not, you know, uh, it's, it's unfair because they beat you up. Oh, you're not a scientist. Instead of dealing with the substance in the, in, uh, of what you're saying. Uh, and, you know, it's a long argument between scientists and philosophers that's been ongoing. But I, I, I'm arguing that my concept is a, is a meaningful contribution. It's a meaningful concept. And I'm hoping at some point that the science, scientists will take it seriously. That's why I'm going to San Jose in a couple of days. And I'll be doing a big poster presentation, eight feet by four feet, showing, developing this argument real solid real, to, to the people in the community. You were going to share with us how the two different poles, or did you, because this is not my field, so to speak, right, right. how the two mirror poles begin the process of bringing things about, because we were talking about the alpha and the omega and the process in between. Right, right. So I'm arguing that there's a pop. One, it's mirror image poles, so the mirror image poles pop, okay, from the probability field, okay? Now, once they pop, and if you have an observer, consciousness is present, then space and time is present, right? Because observers come from Mars, they come from, you know, <laughs> right? So they come from the Earth. So once you have an observer, you have to, yeah, you have a field interplane now between you and the quantum level, okay? So one that thing, once that quantum thing pops, then suddenly it is in the field. It's in the field because we're in the field, okay? Yeah, so I got you have you. to incorporate right. the field into the formulation, right? And once you do, then there are basically the, the quantum, uh, there's a thing in quantum mechanics called uh, quantum entanglement, which is an instantaneous communication between mirror and properties. And that's important to understand that it's mirror and properties and it's instantaneous. Okay. It's faster than light. So essentially, the mirror. Oh, hold, hold on right there. That, that's very important for me. You said faster than light. Yes, it's faster. We've than always it's heard that nothing can accelerate, this, exactly. surpass the speed of light. Right. In my work, I don't know if that's the same thing that you're speaking of, and it's just a different word, is thought is faster than light. Well, how would that be would a parallel of what you were describing, <laughs> sir? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> the thought is, is faster than light. Someone um, asked from the chat room real quick they, Vel, from Velvet. They asked a question, what is positional symmetry? Okay. I'm not sure so that we hear. Positional symmetry, well, when you say positional, there's a sense of space and time, right? And, and so positional symmetry is essentially mirror image symmetry. Like if you look at a tree, you would see the, the, the branch pole up in the air and the root pole embedded in the ground. Excuse me, Alicia, I am in a radio interview. Please take that upstairs. 
<laughs> um, so you would see um, uh, uh, the branch pole up in the air and the uh, root pole embedded in the ground, right? So you have positional symmetry, okay? Uh, one is up, the other is down, okay? If you have a fruit, you would have the stem of the fruit, the stem of the fruit, and then the bottom, if you look at the bottom of a fruit, there's a reflection of the stem, it's called a blossom end, okay? And that's the other side, okay? So the stem flows outward, and then it's tied to the blossom end, so it's a circuit is formed. Essentially, a circuit is formed via quantum entanglement, that instantaneous connection between mirror and properties. So should the mirror image poles pop in space and time, then if they'll be separated because, because you're in space and time now and you have location. And, but if they're separated, but they are one, then by necessity, information from both mirror image poles must be transferred between the two to connect them and unite them as one, okay? So that occurs at the quantum level and that's through quantum entanglement. Once that occurs, then basically circuits are, are created, bridges are created that, that unite the two as one, and those circuits are gonna be material circuits because they're in space and time, and, and, and it's gonna create these material circuits that unite them as two. Living creatures uh, are systems of circuits. You know, you see the, the, um, the, 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 circuit, the, the, um, the nervous system, for example, you know, it's a huge circuit. And you've got oh, the circulatory system. You've got arteries going outward to feed the body. And you've got veins coming inward to, 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 to come back to the beginning and, get, and, and cycle back out again, right? So those circuits are the material circuits that are created in the case of living beings when the poles mind, I believe, mind and body, likely mind and heart, are united as one. Center of Light Radio, the bottom of the hour. My name is Keith Blanchard, your host. I'm with my guest today, Mr. Titus Joseph. We're speaking about lots of really cool quantum stuff. Which <laughs> I just love the quantum soup. It makes me Lots hungry. Hey, if you're watching the video right now, you can see a picture of the cover of his actual book there. I am mind. I am consciousness. Uh, you can find more about my guest at titusjoseph.com. Someone from the chat room asked the question, how would you define metaphysics? Well, I'll give you the actual definition because <laughs> that's what I'm a philosophy major. Right, right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you the actual definition. Metaphysics comes from the expression, the Greek expression, kameta ta fusika, which was what the editors of Aristotle's works, um, after he passed, they put all his works together and categorized them, right? And they wrote kameta ta fusika, for the, meaning the ones that come after the ones about nature. The word physics is, means nature. So they were saying these are the books that, that Aristotle wrote after he wrote the ones about science, essentially. Okay? So, Tametata Physica, the ones that come after the ones about physics. But Aristotle, he thought of metaphysics, he called it first philosophy, meaning the philosophy dealing with the very first cause of all existent things. Okay? So, metaphysics means is, is, is using reason to determine the, the, the first principle of all existing things. That's what metaphysics is. And I am arguing that this concept, positional symmetry, requisite mirror image, is the first principle. You mentioned the arc, in the, in the, uh, the, the actual pronunciation is arc. Arc okay. is, a, is a word in philosophy that refers to the first principle, the original principle from which all things come into being. Uh, so that's what metaphysics is, is the search using reason to determine the first uh, principle from which all existing things flourish and come into being. I have a full chat room and I have questions coming out of, <laughs> out of the bank account here. The question it. is that's being posed from Furious Allure. I guess I pronounced it right. <laughs> Allure. I would like to know about the possibility of a life force outside of our galaxy. Are we able to connect with them through thought? I can at least give you my tw my spin on my two cents yeah. on that. Well, let's hear it. That is an absolute fact. I connect with Nucleus 8, my alien human hybrid friend that I've been knowing for many years through thought. I do this with other 
uh, galactic beings uh, during sleep scapes of awareness. So what is your thought, your answer to that question? And the question again is, I would like to know about the possibility of a life force outside of our galaxy. Are we able to connect with them through thought? I, I believe absolutely, certainly. I mean, I'm, I'd like to quote you on that. Absolutely. Um, uh, consciousness, when you say thought, we, we really think through consciousness, right? Because the tools of consciousness is our thoughts. Consciousness works using thoughts. So um, consciousness is, seems to be the primary source of all things. It may be that the entire universe is conscious. In fact, it, it is. <laughs> universe is a big brain. Definitely. <laughs> it's even got two lobes, you guys. I can show, I'll show you after. I'll, I told you I had some pictures I'm going to send you. Yeah, of course. But it even has the universe is consciousness because if the whole is embodied in everything. Everything right. is alive. Right, right. Exactly. So the you um absolutely so you're talking about really can consciousness what you're really asking is can my immediate consciousness transcend the limits of my immediate space and access consciousness beyond the space and I think it's absolutely uh, definitely possible true it's true and and we live that way really how many times have you thought of something and they call the person calls right away or you know <laughs> you know how many times have you thought something popped into your mind and two minutes later you know, it manifests. Um, so, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, consciousness is God, and there are no limits to what Well, there you have it, because the next question I was going to pose to you from Kelly was, how do you define God? <laughs> Just <laughs> quite nicely. Yeah. yeah, you know, if we look to Scripture, any Scripture, um, they speak about the omnipresence of God. Now, I'm all really yeah. big about definitions. So right. if, we, if we agree that the definition, any dictionary, is our resource for language, it takes the argument out because we collectively agree through a word that this is our telepathic message that I'm conveying so we can all understand each other and concepts and so forth and right. so on. So the definition of I'm the president is present in all places at all times. It goes on further to say there is no place that is not, and the only place right. that is not is in fear because it's a self-created illusion. So if uh -huh. God is everywhere and everything, the whole universe is a breathing <laughs> it's just alive it's, it's, it's a vibrant uh organic a, a conscious ball of consciousness it loves everything because it, it's consciousness um uh you know one you, you mentioned god is everywhere omnipresent so we're going to go through a science the science route on this what is everywhere and present that we can think of in our ordinary reality well as it turns out if there's a where, there's space and time, right? Right? If there's, if, if there's a where, there's space, right? <laughs> so when we look at the universe, it's this huge blob of space and time, okay? I think, and, and this is where we get into the metaphysics where it's no longer science, you can't really prove it. I think space and time is, in a sense, the, the substance of consciousness. That space and time is all conscious, all of it. And it's what creates things, right? Because all things exist in space and time, right? There's the planet over there, it's in space and time. There's the galaxy over there, it's in space and time, you know? So, and, and here's the beauty of this work now. I'm able to show with this work that space and time exist in the meaning inside the words alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Now, let's break that down so people can see that. When we say the beginning, Okay, um, there's a thing in science called dark energy. Dark energy is this expansive force uh, that space-time seems to have. It goes outward and upward, and it gets bigger and bigger. And that seems to be its very nature. So, you know, people ask, how does it do that? And that's its nature. That's dark energy. And space-time, it infuses space-time into the universe, okay? So that's one pole. That's like the stem going outward and upward and then and, you know it infuses its space and time out into the universe and blows the universe up so titus if you would help me to understand what is the difference is there a difference between dark matter and just the empty space say for example in the room that you're in huge difference huge difference please explain it to dark, me. yes so dark matter is the opposite is the opposite side of dark energy dark energy is expansive and it goes outward and gets bigger and bigger and the, the scientists say that's 73 percent of the universe the other side is dark matter dark matter matter is a constricted space and it's where galaxies are now in the heart of every galaxy there is a supermassive black hole okay and at that 
I have a picture of that too, by the way. So we'll have to, if you, that supermassive black hole, that is the end. There is no space and time in there, okay? You've reached the end. And the end is a constricted thing. It, 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 you know, you, 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 it's no longer expansive, now constricted. So like in galaxies, if you're inside a galaxy, they decide to say there's a million times more dark matter in the middle of the galaxy, like where the Earth is, than at the periphery. So the closer you get towards the supermassive black hole, it gets denser and denser and more constricted and more pressure, okay? And, and it's because of that dense thing, it's able to create matter because it, 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 it concentrates whatever is going on in the space and time. And, and so matter falls out uh, according to the science and is formed in the context of galaxies. So galaxies are very important. You can't just have the expansive nature of the universe. You have to have the constricted nature. That constricted uh, dark matter, it creates physical objects. It creates galaxies. And in that galaxy, you know, you have planet bodies and you have water and sand and living creatures and all these things. So mm. the constricted nature is necessary, okay, um, to create things. And once you, you have a created thing, it comes from the beginning but here's the problem. The end is right there because we're, we're in a galaxy and the dark matter is right there and it's very powerful. It's 23% of the universe. The end is right there. So we come into existence and then suddenly the end is right there. <laughs> and that's our problem. <laughs> that's our problem. How the hell do we get the end is right there? I'm, what am I going to do? Right. And, right. and that's, So this is what I'm arguing. This is where I'm at right now in my metaphysics. It's the beginning that we're looking for. It's the alpha pole that we're looking for. And that's why in the spirituality it says you must be born again. You have to go back to the beginning. From the chat room, someone is asking the question, would you please hold up your book again? And while you do that, I'm going to run a question by you from Camille. The question is, how much of your research do you go back through and try to rework? Oh, all the time. All the time. It's, ever, it's always – it started um, – one is a curious world of mirror images. That's the number one one. It's, uh, it's science and it's a solid argument using nature. You know, it's, it doesn't get spiritual. It doesn't get metaphysical. But this one is all spirituality. Um, and you know that we make in this show half spiritual, half science, or however you want to float that. Uh -huh. uh, it's turned into an actually an amalgamation of both those in exactly. a serious way That's because, someone, well, is asking, truth be both, because right? someone is asking the question. Um, what happens to our consciousness when we die? So that's definitely in the spiritual pole. Yeah, so right. what would be your scientific wow. answer to such a uh -huh. response, such a question? That, that, that is a tough question. That is a tough question. Um, there's new science out that suggests, and I haven't read it much to know its veracity, but they're suggesting that consciousness goes, um, goes on. I believe it, uh, okay, my understanding is that consciousness is eternal. It, it's from the I am. Consciousness comes from the beginning. And it's from the I am, which is eternal. So it cannot really die. So what happens is that this conscious thing is born. And the, the end is a god too. It's death. And if you're a living being. And come on, you guys. Can you just do this another time? You see, I'm in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. Come on. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, so we come from the beginning, and uh, consciousness is from the I am. It cannot die. But the end is right there, and it is a potent force. It's 23% of the universe. It's a god. Okay? So that consciousness in the, is born in the context, if it's a living creature, a physical being like us, it's born in the context of a galaxy system. That, that black hole is right there. It's, it's about to die any minute. The living organism eventually dies, and then what happens? So basically, I think death is, is polarity. Instead of mind and body, you now have, because the body is gone, you just have mind, okay? You just have the consciousness. So what happens to the conscious? I think my theory, my understanding, is that uh, everything travels through time, okay? When you, once, if you're in the galaxy system, everything is moving towards the black hole, period. It's like, it's like if you have a, uh, you're on a planet body and you have the North Pole and the South Pole and you point the arrow uh, on the magnet, it's pointing due north, right? It's the same thing. Everything is pointing due uh, north, which is, in this case, straight to that galaxy, to the supermassive black hole in the galaxy. 
So uh, what happens after we die is we go six feet under. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we transcend. Uh, we're no longer in four-dimensional space-time, okay? You got 4D space-time, and you're a living, breathing organism interacting with everyone. Then now you're in a plane. You have to cut off the 4D, and now you're plane, which is three dimensions. It's length, width, and time, okay? Now, so now you're in a plane, and then according to the scientists, eventually become, it becomes spaghettified, which is just a line, just linear, just a line, a dot going through time. So that's linear, so it becomes spaghettified. So consciousness goes through from this high, wonderful plane where you can experience all these wonderful things like ice cream and all the good things we have in life, to six feet under, which is you're, you're, no, you're, no, you're now in a plane. It's no longer 4D. You're, you're in a plane. And, and it's just three dimensions, length, width, and time. And then it goes even tighter and more compressed, and it heads towards that black hole, which is the end. So some, the idea is that somewhere along that journey, for the black hole, for example, in our galaxy is, scientists say, 25,000 light years away. So it's a huge distance to that final end. So it may be that we'll be pulled out for those who have died along the way, we'll be pulled out of that trap and we can live again in a four dimensional plane. That we would have be a, my we have a bunch of questions coming to find <laughs> in the chat room. <laughs> so if you can give us as thorough as possible, but also a small and The question that has now come up is how big do you believe the universe is? I've heard through a lot of my research that the universe is actually can fit on the head of a pin. What are your thoughts about that from all the information and knowledge that you've gleaned, sir? Well, uh, the universe is infinite. I mean, it's, uh, it's, to go back to the beginning would take 13.8 billion years at the speed of light, you know, and it's constantly expanding. So there is a thing, there are some dimensions, in, and I mean, I'm sure you guys are not aware of this, but there's a dimension in cosmology, the science of cosmology, called the elsewhere. It's space-time that is so far away that it does not affect us in any way. There's no interactions with us, no communications, nothing. It's elsewhere, okay? And the scientists say that it's not included in our timeline. It's not of the past, it's not of the future, it's elsewhere. So the space time so far away that because the light hasn't reached us yet, it cannot interact with us in any way. So there's a thing called the cosmic horizon. As the universe expands, the only, there are only two things that are faster than the speed of light. We talked about one, quantum entanglement, which is instantaneous, but also the expansion of space. Space can speed faster than the speed of light, according to the science. So at the edge of the universe, the space-time is expanding so fast that the light cannot reach us, okay? So really, the light is receding, so it's getting darker. So that's called the cosmic horizon, okay? And I, I understand, in my understanding, that the, the, the cosmic horizon must be expanded into the elsewhere, okay? Which is, cannot interact with us. And so the universe is infinite. There is no, uh, the, science, the science says, for example, that uh, the dark energy which expands the universe is 73% of the universe, but the dark matter which constricts the universe is only 23%. So the universe will expand on forever, essentially. Question from Preacher. Help? He would like to know if our consciousness is connected to our awareness. If so, will we ever evolve to the point where we can answer all the questions about life eventually? I, I absolutely believe so. I think consciousness, there's, we can speak of individual consciousness as in a, uh, each individual soul, my little cat over there, a bird over there. Uh, but each individual soul is birthed into a universe that is able to create consciousness, right? To, able to create conscious beings. So that universe itself is conscious. And so we have to uh, transcend our individual consciousness, which is just uh, like a one's personal reality tunnel, and access universal consciousness, which is infinite. And if we are to do so, we would be born again and become enlightened beings. We would be gods. Quite a few people are asking if you can give them some pointers or point them the direction to where they can learn more. Of course, your books, duh. Uh, they want to know what would you suggest if they want to continue, go down a path sort of what you're doing. Of course, read your work, that which is um, 
the manual, so to speak, well, of, the, of the man. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you say uh, off of them to, do, to uh, find more about this kind of thought modality? Well, you know, there's, there's, there, there are, there are, when I wrote the book, I had to figure out where I fit into, you know. Where do I fit in? Is it science? Is it philosophy? Is it metaphysics? Uh, there are a lot of thinkers. There are some thinkers out there like this. You know, Eckhart Tolle, people are familiar with. Um, very metaphysical. Um, you know, Deepak Chopra, of course. Um, uh, the conferences I go to, uh, I've gone to two major conferences on this. Uh, the Science of Consciousness Convention at the University of Arizona, where you see the leading thinkers in, in this field. Um, and uh, Science and Non-Duality, SAND, Science and Non-Duality. That's the one I'll be headed to at the end of this week. And, and so there are a lot of people who are actively on this. In fact, it amazes me when I go to these conferences because everyone is clearly thinking about the same thing. They're on the same page, except, you know, we have different languages, right? So I would argue from my experience, because I tend to see patterns, uh, that 70% of, 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 of what you meet, what I hear at these conferences is all, of, isn't really different. It's the same. It's just different words, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I, this though is new thought. This is very new thought. This is a, an original concept. And so I definitely would recommend you guys, if you're interested, uh, to go to my website and read the books. Uh, the first one, Our Curious World of, of Mirror Images, uh, is is the most basic one. It's solid, um, and then uh, if you if you are already say a believer, and you are already Christian or so, you might like I am mind, I am consciousness, because then I go back and I look at the Bible, and I interpret it from a metaphysical point of view, and it's pretty mind blowing what comes out of there. You'd be amazed what's in the Bible, it's freaky stuff. Titus, are you aware of the redshift controversy which infers galaxy or giving birth to new galaxies, ejecting quasars, and making the galaxy have two or more red shifts? Um, I mean, I'm familiar with the concept of redshift, you know, as it expands outward, you know, the light shifts, uh, um, uh, and, and it's like the Doppler effect. But I know that specifically doesn't interest me too much. How I see that information is in this light. All of the, all phenomena, all of the, the galaxies are united into one huge structure called the cosmic web. And the cosmic web is the biggest structure in the universe. And what's interesting about the cosmic web is that information is shared through it. Information is translated from galaxy to galaxy via this cosmic web. And if you look at a picture of the cosmic web, it is exactly as a picture of the human brain, the neurons in the brain. It's, if you put the two pictures together, they match. And in, in biology, there's a thing, form is equal to function. If you see the same form, it probably has the same function. I'm fairly certain that the cosmic web are the neurons that, that create consciousness in all the universe. <laughs> Center of Light Radio, I'm your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. My guest today is Mr. Titus, Titus Joseph. Question from the chat room. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There we go. Preacher would like to know if our continent, that's the one I read. Oh, I see why. The feet had moved on me. Someone is asking the question. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm bite, biting time. <laughs> one moment. It's a pretty powerful question, actually. Uh -huh. uh, based on what you said so far, do you believe we live in a space that neither had a beginning nor an end or finality? Excellent question. You see, here's the thing. Once you're in a system, okay, say this is the mirror, say, say it's a fruit. Let's say the universe were a fruit. And so you had the stem pole and you had the blossom end pole, right? Okay? But you're inside the fruit. Are you going to see the, do you see the beginning pole? Do you see the end pole? All you see is fruit. It's like if you, if you take a cucumber or anything, any fruit, you chop off the ends first, right? You chop off the mirror image poles first. Chop off the stem, and you chop off the blossom end, and it's the fruit that you're using, okay? That's what's real. It's the fruit. So it's the instant communication between the poles that is real. It is not the poles themselves. The poles themselves are real, but what is created and manifested in reality is that part that is the instant communication between. It's like electricity. Well, yeah, so because the poles, are not separate. the poles are not separate from that which is in the middle. Right, and right, right, right. So, so what, what the, let me get, I'm, I'm a little confused now. 
So one, here it is. Once you're inside the system, like once you're in the universe, you, ca uh, you can't go back to the beginning. Like for the scientists, the beginning, they can go to split second before the beginning. But at point time zero is veiled. It's veiled. They cannot get any further. By the laws of physics, they can't get any further. So there is no beginning in a sense. <laughs> There's only space and time, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. So once you're inside the system, you cannot, you, there is no beginning. Ah. But you know what's bad? There is still an end. You can still see the end, and that's the polarity part. Okay? But the end, if you have an end, that points to the beginning. Because if the end of something, it must have come from something. So by necessity, if you have the end, it points back to the beginning. And uh, so, you know, conceptually, you can you can look at it. Preacher says, I, I don't know if that's clear, but yeah, and it, actually, it is. Preacher says, thanks. This is this this information is more valuable than what I would have learned at my local college. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, leave you be. This is thirty years of thought. It came to me after college thirty years ago, and I've been thinking about it intently all this time. So I kind of digested it and laid it out in simple um, discussion. And it's, it's really a beautiful concept. It's such a beautiful. Here's, I'm arguing that this, this image you see here, that right there is the main template, the main paradigm. The, 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 these are the poles here. And this is the zone of intersection. If this were a fruit, this is the stem, this is the blossom end, and this is the substance of the fruit. That would be the apple. This is the core. In the case of the universe, this is space and time. And this is the cosmic equator, which the scientists just came out with. As I'm looking at this picture, though it's not the exact form, it looks like I'm looking at a Taurus. It is. It's a Taurus. <laughs> the universe, is, <laughs> <laughs> the universe right. is a Taurus-shaped system. It the constantly poles, curves back within itself. It's yes, constantly yes, curving yes. back within itself right. via the point of spiritual awakening. The universe wants to know itself through our experience. That's it. So that's the Taurus. That's, correct? that's, that's the, the big correct? circuit right there, baby. There you That's the big circuit. And the problem, what's in the way is the end, which is a powerful, that pole is in the way. It's a powerful force. So we tend to move towards that. Um, so for us to really learn of the universe, we have to go back to the expansive nature of it. You know, the space-time emitted outward like a fountain. That, that is dark energy. That is, that is the beginning, and it's the beginning. And, you know, it's, the Bible says Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, you know? Literally, when we when we speak of spirituality, we're looking. We want. We are searching for the beginning again, and that is why we have to be born again. We have to go back to the beginning. Let me ask you this: We're talking about the Taurus just a moment ago. Let me throw in a musical element as well as a spiritual element, and you can tell me how this possibly fits into the Taurus. If I, if the musical element, if I was to take a microphone. <clears throat> And put it in front of a speaker. The sound that comes out of the speaker that goes into the microphone that goes into the speaker goes into the microphone. It creates yes. this feedback loop. Yes. But we, we cannot deny that there's some sort of expansion that happens via the information curving back within itself. The right. spiritual element is as we learn to go within ourselves, we begin to regenerate and expand. Is right. that what the Taurus would be yes. on a scientific right. level that it continues to curve back within itself and with each revolution or each passage through itself? It expands, it expands, it expands, it, it expands, expands more and, yeah, and, and, more and more. learns more. and is, It creates a yeah, cosmic yeah, feedback. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And I believe in living creatures, the, uh, the poles are mind and body. You know, the mind takes in information and uh, the body extends out into space. And those are the two poles. And they're united as one via quantum entanglement, which is an instantaneous thing. And that, that instantaneous process in space and time forms all the systems of the body, the circulatory system, the nervous system. And it forms this being uh, that is composed of mind and body. And then that creature gets to interact with other creatures. <laughs> the thing about Tyus? God, here's the thing about God, Go is you're the ocean. If you're the ocean and you got fishes and you got clams and all these creatures, they may not realize the water, right? But the water is always present, and it's how it all came into being. God is like the water. God is the space and time of the universe. And all of it is consciousness itself. All these things are created by consciousness. 
uh, by its own power of consciousness uh, to create things. You know, consciousness is able to create, to, to see things. It does what it loves. Things. Yeah, it does and what it loves. loves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, from right. getting all this Big response time. from the chat room, I, I think you're having a standing ovation here tonight. So I'm getting comment after comment. Thank you, Keith, for a fantastic show. <laughs> Dig it, brother. Uh, if you would give out your contact information, any of the short blurb you might have to close off the show with a final thought, my friend. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Keith. I appreciate the positive energy. Yeah. It feels good. Again, everyone, the books are very important because it's a base of knowledge, okay? Our Curious World of Mirror Images, uh, that's the natural argument. And once you read it, your mind will be utterly blown. Um, all of it is available at TitusJoseph.com. And the second book is I Am Mind, I Am Consciousness, you know, where I'm arguing that uh, we go back to the God of Abraham whose name is I am that I am. So that's a kind of mirror image symmetry right there. And then I am Alpha and Omega, there you have the mirror image poles right there. And I show how those poles, mirror image, those mirror image poles create space and time, which is the universe. And space and time is invisible and omnipresent everywhere at once. This is God. And ultimately I'm arguing that this whole Taurus shaped system is conscious. And that's how it creates things through consciousness. Titus Joseph, thank you for being an empowering guest on Center of Light Radio. My chat room just loved your presence here, sir. Everyone, you can reach Titus Joseph at Titus, T-I-T-U-S, Joseph.com. Again, sir, thank you for being a wonderful, empowering guest here for the scientific-minded as well as the spiritual minded who's trying to keep up that's with right. you. <laughs> that's right. And yeah, I'm on Twitter and Facebook with the same name, so you'll find me if you want. Find me. I'm looking for you guys, man. Dang. Love you. Take care, my brother. Absolutely. <laughs> Next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest, Emily Harrison. How to activate your spiritual gifts with the Akashic Records. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host of Center of Light Radio, every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember to go to centeroflightradio.com, fill out that sign-up form. I will give you a bunch of free stuff, and you'll have access to my newsletter program. Also, if you send me an email, keithanthonyblanchard at gmail.com, and say, Keith, I want my free 30-minute session I will give you 30 minutes of my time one-on-one -on -one, uh, and begin the empowerment process so you can expand into your bliss and all that you desire and deserve. Also remember Wednesday, I'm going to be putting out my documentary movie called Peace, Love, and Unity about my time with Swamji Visva Yogi, this God-realized man right here. All done on my cell phone and it actually looks <laughs> pretty wonderful. I look forward to seeing you next week. Peace, love, and light. And always remember to ease and to bliss.